This is powerful. This is powerful. So you, you are going to be writing notes, and I want you to, uh, number one, write this topic, the devil's strategy to win our battles. The devil's strategy. What the, the strategies of the enemy. The enemy's strategy. Uh, how is he destroying the church? Remember, I said this is my letter to the church. How is the devil destroying us through the church? Your battle is not outside. Your battle is in the temple. Uh, but please, I, I, I want you to, to really walk with me here. I said your battle, your failure is not coming from outside. Your failure is coming from the church. The church that you are worshipping to. That's where the battle is coming from. So I want you to understand this now. Pay attention. Number one poor strategy. The devil is transforming the place of worship into an entertainment place. <laughs> the devil is he, he has successfully transformed the house of prayer into either a money-making scheme or an entertainment place. So before we go there, I want us to have just a background check. What is the temple? What is the church? It is the place that we seek the Lord. Please uh, let us quickly uh, go into the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms 122, uh, if I'm not mistaken. There's something that I want us to uh, quickly look at there. Very, very profound. Uh, we are talking about, what is it when we are talking about the church? What are we talking about? When we are talking about the church, what is it that we are talking And what, what, what do we expect? When we are talking about, I am going to church, what am I going to do? Now, pay attention. The book of Psalms 122, we are going to read from verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Okay, we are talking about the temple. We are talking about the church. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, you and me, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony. So number one, a, 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 a church or a temple, we have to testify the goodness of the Lord there. It is a place where we testify the acts of the Lord. It is a place of testimony. Okay, go with me. To give thanks unto the Lord. It is a place of giving thanks unto the Lord. So now, here I'm not talking of money. Because many charlatans, they begin to think that, you know, this is a place you give the thanks to the Lord and they rush to money. Actually, the reason why I am addressing these letters to the church is for us to have clarity on certain things that the devil is using to manipulate the children of God. So it is a place where you are worshipping him and you say, Jehovah God, I thank you for your grace upon my life. I thank you for your covering. I thank you for your provision. I thank you for your mighty. I thank you because you are Jehovah. So it is a place where you are giving thanks. So you are communicating with him. You are communicating with the Lord. It's a place where there is communication. You are actually reminding him of the good things that he has been doing before you enter in the temple. We are going. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. So a, a church is a place where the presence of the Lord is. Please, I, I want you to uh, really pay attention to this. This is, this is very deep. Now, pay attention to this. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So here we are, we are, we are, David is telling us that uh, in that Jerusalem, the thrones of judgment. So we are talking of the presence of the Lord because he will sit on that throne, judging, releasing. 
breaking and losing. So now, when our churches must be characterized, number one, by the presence of the Lord. God wants that church, whenever people, they step in, people are healed before the pastor laid hands on the sick. Demons are running away before an altar call is being called. Why? Because the throne is there. We, we don't have to wait for the end of the service for pastor to call people. No, the moment people step in, they can feel the presence of the Lord. When was the last time you felt the real presence of the Lord without the pastor conjuring it? You enter and you feel that there is God in this place. You enter and you start to bubble in tongues. You enter, you were sick and you are healed before the men of God even arrived. When was the last time? Which means the throne is not there. It's no longer a temple. What makes a church a church? It is the presence of Christ in it and we feel the presence of God. You enter there and there is love. There is peace that is entering into your life. I want us to be able to feel what Psalms 122 is saying. The presence of the Lord. People are testifying, I was sick when I entered here. Everything disappeared. Things were not okay, but there is a peace in the, the peace of the Lord, that joy of the Lord that surpasses all understanding, that I am feeling right now before the present worship, before the intercession. Why? The throne is there. Please, I want you to walk with me. This is what Christ wants to restore in our churches, not what we are doing right now. We have churches that are filled by, uh, you know, like what we are going to be talking about, uh, activities. People are not even filled with the Holy Spirit. And we go home and we say church was powerful because we danced and we sweated ourselves home. No. Now pay attention, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In other words, the church is a place of prayer. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Most of the time should be in prayer, in reading the word of God, in seeking the faith. Please, I want you to walk with me and understand that. There are many churches that are surrounding us right now. You don't even know prayer. Prayer is just five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes, and that's it. Imagine the program is for seven hours or six hours or five hours, and the time of prayer in the word is just an hour. What are you doing with the rest? Who were you talking to if the majority of the time is going to your own things? I'm going to touch this more in length. So it is a press of prayer. So there is communication with the Lord. Dialogue with the Lord. Fellowship with the Lord. That's a church. Now, these are the things that we are supposed to examine in our churches. Because the devil is destroying it. The enemy is destroying what I'm talking about right now. Prayer is taken away. The intercession has been turned into a joke. Prayer is only when we are closing and it is a prayer of protection and shout I receive and that's it and you go home. Yet we are told here that the prayer that will bring peace, look at your state as you are going out of, 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 of that prayer, of that church, of the temple. There is no peace. We are told here, the prayer that will bring peace. <laughs> so, so as you are praying, you feel the peace of the Lord. Even as you go home, everything is okay. You are in turmoil as you finish the church. You, 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 are, you are depressed out of the church. Because in the church, somebody was laughing at you. The ushers, the intercessors, they were actually mocking you in the church. In the middle of the of, of the of the of the of the of the church, 
somebody texted your husband from within the church the the present worshiper was testing you was texting your 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 your, your husband your wife this one is in love with that one. In the church fornication, there's no peace there. Things are being destroyed. Relationships are being destroyed within the church as the church service is going on. The devil is at work. So prayer, the moment prayer is taken out, the moment the church is lazy in prayer, then you know that the devil has taken all of you. We are going to look at, you know, very uh, scary scriptures that we are going to be looking at. Like I said, you know, I said to myself, Lord, I'm a sinner. After God was ministering this to me, I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Have mercy upon my life as an individual, as a pastor. Have mercy upon my life as the member of the body of Christ. Have mercy upon our lives. Because what we have been doing is something that Christ is not aware of. What we have been doing is something that God does not even know. He's looking and saying, what is happening to my church? Is this the church that I died for? With all the gimmicks that is happening, is this the church that I died for? With all that they are doing, with all that they are preaching, is this the church that I went on the cross of Calvary for? And we are doing that whilst we are wearing fancy suits, coming from fancy houses, driving fancy cars. And we come there on the place where we are supposed to worship the Lord. We are using it for something else. Let us repent. There's still time. Let us repent. We, we still have time to come back to the right way. We still have that time to repent and say, Lord, look at me. Peace be within thy walls. Okay. They shall prosper that love thee. So it is a place, a, a, a place of loving the Lord, fellowshipping with the Lord. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, Peace be within this. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. So a church, it is a place of seeking the face of the Lord. Look at all these things that I have listed. There is no room for something that contradicts this. It is a place of testifying. It is the place of seeking the face of the Lord. It is the place of prayer. It is the place of fellowshipping with the Lord. So the majority of the time, it must be him. The majority of the time, it must be the Lord. So the devil now is actually changing that. D diverting what is supposed to be done in the church and replace it with something that we are thinking we are serving the Lord, yet we are not. Please write this one down. The Old Testament has a clear layout on what the temple should be and how it should operate, what is expected in and outside the church. There are things that could be done at the outer, co outer court. And there are certain things that you could not do outside the Holy of Holies or the Holy Place. We are going to touch on that separately. So there are activities that are supposed to be done outside the church. And there are things that are expected to be done in the church. Because when we are talking about in the temple, we are talking about the Holy of Holies. When we are talking about inside the temple, we are talking about the holy place where we are seeking the face of the Lord, not anything else. So the problem now, the things that are being done in on the outer court, we are bringing them in the holy of holies merely because of pressure. Merely because there are things that we want to solve. 
the animals that are supposed to be presented outside there, they are actually in the Holy of Holies where the, the, it's only blood that is needed there. Your covenant and your relationship with God is what is needed and we are bringing the things of the outer court inside. We are defiling the sanctuary. And God is saying, what are you doing? I don't need the noise of animals here. All I want is the, the covenant, your, your, your relationship with me. All I want you to do is to praise me, to worship me. All I need is your heart in this place. So we are coming up with many things there. We are coming up with money schemes, raising, fundraising, even though you are raising it for the building of that church, but you are doing it in the wrong place. Now, pay attention to this. Programs. There are a lot of programs that the devil is giving us. I think we're going to touch uh, on that more in, in more detail. Programs that the devil is giving the church. And by you so focusing, you are defiling the sanctuary because now you are confusing what is supposed to be done at what place. I want us to quickly go uh, into the word of God. We are going to read the book of John chapter 2. We are going to read the book of John chapter 2. I want you to write these uh, scriptures uh, down. And I want us to go to verse uh, 14. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money city. And when he had made a scourge of small cause, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold the doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. I, I, I want us to uh, look at this. Take these things hence. Make not my father's house and a house of merchandise. Now, please pay attention. The devil is very cunning. The devil is very skillful in deceit. So, any person that is falling, any leader, any pastor, any bishop, any archbishop, any apostle, overseer, prophets, that are misled by the devil, they are not actually realizing that they are going off track. I, I want to repeat that. They are doing what they are doing in the name of the Lord. They are not very... The, the, the people that I'm addressing to right now, I'm addressing this to somebody who is ignorant of what is happening. And ignorance does not only come to the church member. Ignorance is coming also to the leaders, the founders of churches. Those who are, that are holding titles, the prophets. And yet in their operation, they are misled. Remember the, 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 what we read from the book of 2 Corinthians. We were told that he can camouflage himself into an angel of light. So you need to pay attention. So in other words, if you are not paying attention, you will think that this is an angel of light, and yet it is of darkness. Pay attention to this. I want us to look into this uh, story more deeply. Jesus Christ is approaching the temple. Not the market square. The temple. The temple is led by priests. And the one who is the head of that is actually called the chief priest. So in other words, they control the affairs of the temple. They know what God wants. But yet the same people there, they have actually allowed the money changes trade to happen within the temple. Money to get in within the temple. I want you to walk with me there because I'm touching something there. 
They have allowed it, which means the reason why these people are trading, the reason why there is black market in the, in the temple of God, the reason why there is merchandise, exchange of goods, making money in the church is because the priests have permitted it. And the Son of God is coming. And he, as he was looking at it, he saw an error that the chief priest is not seeing. The error is not about money. The error is not about we want to build. We want to, to, to keep our men of God. We want to bless our men of God. We want to buy properties. No, no, no. The error is in the location, the position that you are doing what you are doing. We need money. That's very true. Uh, the, the devil will come and minister to you and say, the church cannot run without money. You are correct, but the, the, the place that it must be raised, that's where the problem is coming. That's where Christ is not happy. This is the same Christ that is actually answering a problem by money. Peter is coming and say, listen, we need to collect it. They're coming to take taxes. And he said, listen, we don't pray about this. Just go to the river, cast your hook. The first fish that you're going to take, open his mouth, take money. Which means money is very, very important. But where are you finding it from? Because there, there's a spirit I want to show you what's happening right now there. You can never, no matter the projects that you have, raise money in the time or the place where God is supposed to be worshipped. So the devil will tell you that there is rent that is needed right now. There is rent. 